Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a pairwise binomial test uh, which could be a follow-up on a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit. So, uh, if you're interested in how to perform a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit, watch uh, my other video on that specifically. So this is more like a follow-up on that. The first thing we will need, and this is going to take some time though, um, is actually the number of categories. If you don't know this from the start, what you could do is copy all the data. I'll be using the data in column A as an example. Paste it into a blank um, column. And then actually make sure it's still all selected. And then go to data. And then select remove a duplicate. And my data has a header. And then OK. And now it already tells me there are five unique values remaining, and that's these five. So my number of categories in this example is five. And I've actually copied uh, this then also up here, because we need to know how many are in each one individually. You can use a count if function for that. And I need to be counting in all my data in column A. And then the criteria is simply in this one. Press Enter or Control Enter to remain in the same cell, and then copy paste it down or use the autofill handle. As you can see, this one is indeed doing the widowed and escape. It shows me the result 181. Now we need to do all the pairs, and for each pair we actually then need to s uh, need to sum. So I'll be using this one here uh, as the first one, and I've actually shown you the formula up here looks pretty scary but in essence it's simply telling to add these two up for this one so how does that work it's a V uh, lookup and it's going to be looking up the married that's in a column and I'll be copy pasting this so I need a dollar sign in front of the column letter you can press F4 a few times to toggle between the different dollar options or you can just simply type it in then it needs to look it up in this table and that table needs to be fully fixed, so F4. And it puts dollar signs around everything in that range. I want to see the second column and only exact matches. Then I need to add the similarly the next one, which is the one that's in the column, the title, uh, F4 to fix now the row. And it needs to be looking that up in that same little table up here and second column and exact matches only and now enter and as you can see it simply sums up these two which indeed here as you can see is 1286 I can copy paste this formula now Control C select everything Control V I won't be needing the diagonal so I can actually get rid of those and then for the binomial test, we are going to assume, because it's pairwise, that there are only two options each time, and that, in theory, they have a 50-50 chance, so 0.5. Then, for the binomial test itself, equals, I'll be using binom this. There are a few different options as well, but this is the one I'm using. Um, I need the minimum of the two values that we actually just had, so min and then again a fee lookup and then I can actually use the same thing this one and then semicolon <laughs> in this table and then F4 to fix it all again and then second column and zero or and I can do this now slightly faster because I do have the total up here so I can say or this one minus that exact same value so I'm just going to be copy pasting that VLOOKUP bit and then paste it and now I can close the minimum and the number of trials is of course uh, this one and then the uh, probability of success is that 0.5 I need to fix that as well so F4 and cumulative is going to be set to TRUE and because we want it two-sided, uh, we actually multiply the result by two. Control enter and then I can copy paste this everywhere and we have our binomial test results. Now these are of course not needed. And then 
actually what we want to do is perhaps adjust for the multiple testing so we can use a bond for Roni um, uh, adjustment for that which requires the number of possible um, tests that we're actually doing so in this case if we look here and at the count it says 20 we can actually calculate that by using the combin function in Excel oh, combin and then the number of categories which we had up here and because it's pairwise we'll simply use semicolon 2 and that gives us 10 um, it here actually says 20 but that's because uh, these the upper right will be the same as the lower right so actually it's 20 divided by 2 is indeed that 10 so the adjustment then would be simply by multiplying these results by that uh, number of tests so I can simply say here that this one times and then this one f4 to put it all in it doesn't change much in this case because there's a loads of data copy paste remove the diagonal again and actually we only need half of this but I'll leave everything in and as you can see even the biggest one here is still 0 0.026 so that's still below the 0 0.05 usual threshold so in this case we might be able to conclude that indeed all these values are significantly different from each other and that's it that's how you can perform a binomial test uh, with a Bonferroni adjustment uh, as a post hoc analysis for Pearson chi-square goodness of it